with an evidence sample that the low copy number technique has been used upon, the peak heights are typically much lower. Uh, the level of background noise is typically much higher so that it becomes difficult to distinguish reliably between signal and noise. With conventional DNA test results, the in the best of circumstances, which is what we're expecting, the interpretation is very cut and dried. Either a DNA profile is present or it's not. Uh, in low copy number DNA testing, the expectation actually tends to be just the opposite, where even from one uh, analysis of a test result to a replicate of that very same evidence sample's DNA profile, you may not see the same result. Part and parcel with the low copy number test, as it's performed by the Forensic Science Service, is doing all the low copy number tests in at least duplicate, meaning that a single evidence sample will have at least two low copy number DNA profiles generated from it. Uh, a somewhat surprising thing to people who haven't been exposed to low copy number testing is that it's quite common for the first replicate to give a very different looking DNA profile than the second replicate. And again, this is something that you would never expect to see happen with conventional testing. And it just compounds then the difficulty of doing comparisons then to that reference sample to see if a particular suspect is a possible contributor to the sample or not. This drawback with low copy number emerged in the OMA trial, where a profile found in a bomb supposed to have been built by Sean Hoey was instead matched with that of a 14-year-old schoolboy living in the north of England. But what Professor Crean and his fellow critics of low copy number are also concerned about is that when the volumes of DNA under consideration are so minuscule, it only serves to raise more pressing questions about transfer or how these tiny amounts ended up at a crime scene in the first place. Our bodies are made of trillions of cells, and we leave them behind us in huge numbers wherever we go. Uh, a handshake typically transfers many hundreds, if not thousands, of cells, and, you know, we do that without any thought of it. Uh, touching an object can easily bring onto us uh, DNA from that object, from just a, a small number of cells. But that's much less of a concern when you're talking about the need for hundreds of cells to be transferred as opposed to a handful of cells. And again, at the heart of low copy number testing is this great strength of sensitivity, but this, you know, th th this associated problem of, well, we found a DNA profile, but what does it mean? How and when did that DNA profile come to be associated with the article?